Fox News Channel continuing coverage of the massacre in Aurora, Colorado. Jennifer Seeger says she was sitting in the second row of the theater, as she describes it, about four feet from the shooter when he pointed a gun at her face. She ducked to the ground, crawled toward the exit, and on her way out, as she tells the story, she saw a man with a bullet wound in his back. She says she tried to check his pulse, but she says she had to keep moving because, as she put it, I was going to get shot. With us now from Aurora, Jennifer Seeger and her friend Corbin Dates. Jennifer, thank you. Corbin, thank you. Jennifer, how are you? Um, as, as of right now, I'm just kind of trying to get through the day. I'm just, you know, taking it one minute at a time. I'm, you know, I'm kind of running on empty, but I'm, I'm, do, I'm trying to be strong for those families that have um, definitely lost all the, their family members and, and loved ones. Because um, they can't be here right now, but I can, and I'm definitely trying to show them strength for them. So. Jennifer, do you, do you have a memory, a, a clear memory of, of how this began? And if you did, could, if you do, could you take us through it from your perspective? Yes, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah, um, we're we're maybe 20 minutes into the movie, and um, it was a calm part of the movie. There's no guns. There's no nothing. And uh, all of a sudden, I look to my right, and there's uh, this guy, you know, who's coming through this exit door to my right, and he looked like he was an actor or something. You know, like he was just like a prop or some extra pizzazz that was supposed Describe to be added to the movie premiere to make what? it look interesting. And that's what everybody was thinking. Yeah, he what well, he he looked like a. Like a SWAT team member, you know, like he had Kevlar on, he had a vest on, he had a, a gas mask on, and uh, he had a rifle in his hand. I didn't see any other weapons. I know he had other ones later on, but uh, all I could see was the rifle. And he looked like he was literally like, uh, a, like in a video game, or a, he was a like a literally like he looked like a SWAT team member or somebody in the army, essentially. And um, when he came in, he was probably. Uh, he's a tall guy, like six foot, six three, 185 pounds, 200 pounds, um, lean, muscular, and it was intimidating. You didn't know what to think of it at first. When he walked in, you just thought he was just this guy who was just joking around or something, you know, and everybody just was caught off guard and really silent at first. And then he went ahead and threw um, the, the gas grenade and pulled the top up, off of it, and it uh, went off, and everybody thought that it was probably part of some special effect or anything like that. And then the second that uh, he shot the ceiling the first time, it, w it was real. At that point, everybody was in a panic, and um, you know, it started running around. There's a gun. There's a gun. There's screaming. There's women. There's children around. And literally, he went from this to this to my face with the gun, with the rifle. And I was just, I at that part of my life, I just didn't honestly know what to do. But I knew that if I didn't do something in the next five seconds, I was going to be dead. So I literally just jumped and dove as far as I could into that aisle, and I literally landed on this guy, and I crawled underneath. Um, the chair as much as I possibly could and dug myself into there and I told everybody to just stay still and don't move until he goes up the stairs and at that point then everybody just crawl just crawl as fast as you possibly can and um, you know when we did that there's just tons of gunshots he was just relentless he was just shooting anybody that he possibly could it didn't matter who you were a guy woman and child it, if you were trying to escape he was gonna shoot you and um, all you hear is screams, and then at one point there was a silence because he was reloading on his end, but they were still screaming and, and crying, and it was just mass chaos, and the tear gas was excruciating. You know, my eyes were watering so bad that it was hard to see, and it was getting really hard for me to breathe, and I was on the verge of, you know, having a panic attack, and I said, you know, I can't breathe, I gotta get out of here, I'm gonna suffocate in a second here. And so I just tried to get everybody out, but at that time, Everybody eventually got to the exit door and they, they ran back because they were saying that, that he was going up to the exit door and shooting people that were trying to escape. So I, at that point I told everybody to just lay down, just lay down, get in an aisle and lay down and pretend you're dead. And then um, we did that and, and he, he kept, continued to keep shooting up and down the aisles. And at one point it got it caught quiet and he left and I don't know how or when he left. But apparently, I mean, he looked like a SWAT man so he could definitely blend in as he went through the crowd. So that makes sense. And then. Um, I tried to get out and we were bear crawling our way out. As I did that, there was this, there was this girl that was on the stairs and it was just lifeless, you know, like 12, 14 years old, dead, just in cold blood. And there was other bodies and it was just a massacre. And then, you know, I saw this gentleman, as I knocked into him, I thought he was dead, but he really wasn't. He was moaning and groaning. I went over to reach to him and check his pulse because I have EMT training and I wanted to see if he was okay and um, try to get him out of there. So I wrapped my arms underneath him and I tried to pull him out. And I got some of his blood on my wrist when I did that. And um, as I did that, everybody's like, no, 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 drop him, drop him, because the gunman's coming back. We don't want you to get shot. So at that point, he runs in front of me. 
and I, he takes off. So at that point, I'm still dragging him, and I was like, you know what, I gotta go, I gotta go, because it's either him or me. But I would gladly take the bullet for him. It was just a fight or flight instinct, and I had to go. Jennifer, did you point. or Corbin ever I hear ran. him say anything? So. No, he never no. said a thing. He just threw the gas container in there, and he started pulling his gun out and shooting people. And did he mostly just stay put at the beginning in the front of the theater by that exit to your right? Or did he move up and down these aisles where you say people were lying yeah, down I, pretending to be dead? He moved uh, as... Yeah, as, as, far, as far as what was going, he first started with me, and, um, and got, by the grace of God, he didn't shoot me. I don't know why, because there's six-year-olds that got shot. You know, I'm 22. It's like, why didn't you take me instead of that six-year-old? They have so much life to live. Um, and that's what I was only thinking about. But he, at first, he shot the people behind me. I saw some moaning and groaning and, and hearing moaning and groaning, and I was just, like, freaking out at that point. I was just staying real quiet. And then he walked up the left side of the stairs and started shooting people in those aisles, and they were all trying to push to the opposite side and run away from him. And he would shoot them, and then he started going into the aisles and shooting people. And everybody, else, progressively, anytime anybody got to uh, try to get away, he would shoot them. So. By the t when you got out of there, I, I, I guess he had already been apprehended by the time you got out, or were they still looking for him, or what was the deal? Yeah, um, he had, he got out. He got out of there. I was me and him were probably one of the last people out. To be honest, there was a few of us, but it was me, literally me and him because we were on the very front of the theater and we kept getting pushed back because people kept coming back in. And um, at that point, he had left, and I just didn't notice because I wasn't trying to lift up my head. I was just trying to stay as far down on the ground as I could. And that tear gas was making it really hard for me to see and breathe. And um, he had left before I even got out, but I was still ter terrified. You know, he, he could have come in back in at any point. Corbin, when you look back on this, uh, I mean, how surprised are you that you're standing there talking to us now? I, I, it's, it's still a mystery to me today. Being as close as we were to the gunman, five feet in front of us, you, it, it, it's, it just doesn't make any sense. My family tells me that, that God probably has a plan for us, but that the analytical side of me just really just doesn't, just doesn't think that things add up, that we made it out of there, and everybody else who had the clear distance from us wasn't able to. Yeah, it, it's, it was literally just a, a, a game of probability. It's not a game, but it was literally like Russian roulette. You know, it could have been anybody. I could, I could have been anybody. They could have been anybody. Yeah. Um, and it, it was unfortunate because he just didn't have a ran he didn't have a specific target. He was just shooting anything and everybody he could get his hands on. I can't imagine having the wherewithal and, and the and the frame of mind to be able to go jump on the guy or try to take him down or something. But I wonder if anybody in there did. Uh, you know what, I, I think it, it crossed somebody's mind after the fact, yeah. but during that time, I think instinctively, as just people wanting to survive, we just ran. There was no time for, you know, beating that guy up, but I mean, honestly, if I would have if I would have thought about things better, if, if he didn't have a gun in my face, I would have, I would have shown him, you know, we're sticking where the sun don't shine. But basically, you know? when a, basically what happened for both of us, we both had like, had like, a, had like a cold reflex. We weren't exactly freaking out like the rest of everybody else. We had a plan to stay down, stay calm, get people in front and of us to, to, stay, to keep calm we just so that we won't get out. as much attention to us and try to get them out as fast as we can. Right. That was our main objective. It wasn't, it wasn't a matter of, um, you know, getting this, getting this guy because we knew the cops would be in there soon. I mean, the yeah. municipal buildings right down the street Correct. and they literally right. had come in seconds after we had left. But um, my main objective was save as many as you possibly can. Well, Jennifer Seeger, Corbin Dates on scene, survivors. To both of you, thanks and all the best. Our coverage